Hi, this is Gary Rosenzweig with another socially aware episode of MacMost Now. Today, let's answer some viewer questions. The first question today comes from Victor. Victor writes, how do I convert real player files into QuickTime files? Well, real player files are a type of either streaming media or downloadable media like QuickTime or Flash Video that you see all over the web. And they come in different flavors like audio and video. And there's even ones that stream directly from a server. Those you probably won't be able to convert. But the ones that you download you might be able to try to convert. Look for a program called FFmpeg. You can find it at FFmpegX.com. And if you go to the website you'll see that it's basically a program where you drop one type of video file onto it and tell it what you want to convert it to. So I'll give it a try. I'm sure it varies from file to file for real player files. But at least it's worth a shot. The next question comes from Jan. Jan writes, can I use my European Apple USB power adapter to charge an 8 gigabyte iPhone shipped from the USA or is my only chance will be charging from my laptop? Well Jan, I've never actually seen a European USB adapter so I'm not sure if there's any difference. But what I do know is that most power adapters, these are adapters that usually have a power brick as part of them. Uh, they're used on all Apple laptops, they're used for iPhone charging, that type of thing. These types of adapters usually take basically any type of power and convert it to DC power. They automatically convert different types of voltage. So you can use the same adapter in Europe as you can in the United States even though the voltage is different. What may be different though is the type of plug. You may need a converter to convert the straight up and down type of USA plugs to the different types of plugs used by different countries. But most DC power inverters, including all the ones I've ever seen from Apple in recent years, work on any voltage. Then they convert it to DC and DC power is universal. It doesn't really matter what country you're in. Once the brick has converted the power you can charge anything you want with it. Now USB is probably even a better case because USB should be universal. That's the U in USB. So any type of USB device as long as it plugs in and works should charge any USB device that charges with USB. So an iPhone should charge with anything that actually works. So the short answer is almost certainly yes. Next Rune writes in, is it possible to organize the default OS X applications in suitable subfolders in the Applications folder? Well yes, definitely. You can go ahead and create subfolders in the Applications folder. Matter of fact, some of these are already created for you. For instance, there's an iWork folder, if you have iWork, that has the iWork applications in it. You can go and create your own. I myself also have things like games and video applications and audio applications and things like that. Now, the one catch is that if an application is poorly written, then it may have some trouble and they expect to be found in the Applications folder. So you want to be careful with some third party applications. But if it doesn't work you can always move it back to the top level of the Applications folder. I've also noticed that when moving some applications around it asks you for your password. It just wants to make sure that that user has permission to go ahead and move something in the Applications folder regardless of whether it's moving it out of the Applications folder or rearranging it in the Applications folder. So go ahead and arrange everything in your Applications folder by subfolders if you like. I certainly have to as I've got just about 50, 60 different applications and just looking at my applications folder is troublesome if I don't have them sorted somehow. Finally, Deb writes, how do I get my email signature to start at the top of reply rather than all the way at the bottom after the quoted text? Well Deb, this was a problem in earlier versions of mail. A lot of people didn't like this because other programs including earlier Mac mail programs had put the signature right at the top so you can reply to it and then still have the quoted text below your signature. However, in the most recent version of mail this has been fixed. Let's go and take a look here. Uh, all you need to do is go ahead into the mail preferences and under signatures which is almost the second to last tab there you can click on place signature above the quoted text. So now when you reply to an email your signature appears right at the very top rather than at the bottom after the quotes. That's it for today. If you've got a question you'd like me to answer on the podcast you can email me at questions at macmost.com. I'll try to either answer on the podcast or maybe reply to you directly. Until next time this is Gary Rosenzweig with MacMost Now.